Hello, I am Dr. Azal from MedicoVisual.com and in today's video, we will talk about the mechanism of action of adenovirus-based coronavirus vaccines. These vaccines include, for example, the Oxford-AstraZeneca's vaccine, the CanSinos vaccines, and Johnson & Johnson's vaccine, and some other vaccines as well that use adenovirus vector. As you know, the coronavirus, it enters into the cell through its spike protein. It attaches its spike protein to the ACE2 receptors. And if we block this step, we can block the entry of uh, this coronavirus into the cell. And thus, we can prevent the infection. So what we do is that we try to generate the immune response against these spike proteins. These are the those spike proteins and we generate immune response against these spike proteins to block the entry of coronavirus into the cell as well as to kill this coronavirus before it can cause disease. Right. So what happens here is that um, as I have told you previously that these vaccines they use adenovirus as a vector or as a transport vehicle to transport the spike protein gene into the cell and then the cell will synthesize the spike protein and then it will train the immune system to fight against this spike protein. So basically this is our uh, uh, adenovirus and adenoviruses are one of the etiological agents of common cold in humans. There are certain types of adenoviruses the problem with using adenovirus as a vector is that many people, a huge population of humans, they are already immune to the adenovirus. So they can kill, their immune system can kill the adenovirus before it can transport the spike protein gene into the cell. For this reason, in these vaccines, what they do is that they use either the chimpanzee adenovirus, to which humans are not usually exposed, or sometimes they use less common strains of adenovirus that are less common in humans. For example, adenovirus 26 and adenovirus 32. These are less common strains of adenovirus. Uh, Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine, for example, it uses chimpanzees adenovirus. And uh, the, the Johnson & Johnson and CanSino Biologics, they use less common strains of adenovirus. The reason is same that they want to mitigate the problem of immunity against the vector itself. So how do we use this adenovirus as a vector? What we do is that we remove certain genes from this adenovirus through some biotechnological methods. And for example, E1 and E3 genes are deleted, thus making this adenovirus replication incompetent. Now this adenovirus, it itself cannot cause any disease when it enters into the cell. Then what we do is that, as you know, the SARS-CoV-2 is an RNA virus. And within the RNA, within its RNA, there is a gene, there is a recipe to synthesize the spike protein. What we do in lab is that we convert this spike protein RNA through the process of reverse transcription into spike protein double-stranded DNA, right? We convert it into spike proteins gene or DNA. Then what we do is that we insert this, this gene, this spike proteins gene into the adenovirus. So here is that spike protein gene into inserted into the uh, adenovirus. Now this is that adenovirus vector-based DNA vaccine. Now it can enter into the cell and it can cause the immune response. It can train our immune system to fight against the spike protein. Now let's see how it works. So let's say we give the injection of any adenovirus based vaccine, for example, Oxford vaccine. Adenovirus have wide tissue tropism. What do I mean by this wide tissue tropism? It means that it can attach with and infect a wide variety of different types of cells. Now exactly what cells it can infect? I was also confused about this point. So I decided to contact the Oxford COVID-19 media group as well as Professor Dr. Sarah Gilbert. 
Now this is what they said in the email. They say that uh, this vaccine it can infect myocytes, skeletal muscle fibroblast and endothelial cells. Professor Dr. Sarah Gilbert had said that it often infects the fibroblast through the CAR receptors. What are CAR receptors? CAR receptors are called Coxsackie and adenovirus receptors. This is the receptor that is used mainly by this adenovirus to enter into the cell. So as we have discussed, it can enter into wide variety of cells. Mainly here it will enter either the skeletal muscle cell or fibroblast. Fibroblasts are abundantly present within the extracellular matrix of the skeletal muscle. So as this adenovirus based vaccine, these particles they attach with this CAR receptors what will happen is that they will pinch inward. A pit will be formed and then a sac will be formed and this is called endocytotic vesicle. Now this, is, this has been trapped into this vesicle. This vesicle has special channels that can pump protons into the vesicle and thus the pH of this vesicle will decrease. The change in pH will cause uncoating of this uh, of this particle and ultimately what will happen that this nucleocapsid, this outer coat, here is that outer coat, this outer coat will be removed and ultimately the this, this uh, genome of this adenovirus, it will enter. Of course, it is not the genome of adenovirus right now it, because it is actually modified genome, it contains spike proteins, right? gene of spike protein so it can enter into the nucleus and it will remain there as an episomal or extra chromosomal dna here is the symbolical representation of dna of the cell the, our body's own dna and here is the dna that we inserted through this adenovirus vector this adenovirus vector dna it does not integrate with this uh, human's DNA. It does not integrate with the DNA of cell. How do we know this? Because adenovirus, these are not new viruses. They are known for some decades. They have been causing diseases in, in humans, but, but till now there is no evidence that they can integrate into the genome of human. Now here what will happen that this DNA, it will be converted into mRNA to the process of transcription. And now this SARS-CoV-2 spike proteins mRNA, it will come out of nucleus, right? And now here is that mRNA of spike protein, right? Now from here onward, the process is exactly the same as that of mechanism of action of mRNA vaccine. If you have already watched that video on the mechanism of action of mRNA vaccine, you can just skip this part. But here I am going to repeat that process. Now what will happen that this mRNA of spike protein, it will be translated by using the cellular translation machinery, cellular protein synthesizing machinery. It will be translated ultimately into the spike protein. This spike protein will be processed and some fragments of the spike protein will be displayed onto MHC type 1 receptors onto the cell. This is a way of telling our immune system that what is happening, what is being synthesized into the cell. So the sample of whatever was being synthesized into the cell is sent into MHC1, is displayed onto the MHC1 receptors. Meanwhile, some of these spike proteins, they will be synthesized and they will be secreted outside the cell. So here is the cytotoxic T cell or CD8 positive lymphocyte. Millions of different cytotoxic T cells with millions of different specificities are wandering into the blood. They are trying to find their specific antigen. Let's suppose here comes the cytotoxic T cell that is specific for this spike protein fragment. Now as soon as it comes across this spike protein fragment that was being displayed onto MHC1 receptor, it will become active. Similarly, these spike protein particles, they will be picked up by B lymphocytes. 
the specific B lymphocyte that is specific for that, that uh, spike protein and then what will happen that it will also become active. Similarly, some of these spike proteins, they will be engulfed by macrophages as well as other antigen presenting cells and they will display them onto MHC2, not MHC1. MHC1 was here, here is the MHC2. The professional antigen presenting cell display the antigens on MHC2 while all other nucleated cells they display onto MHC type 1. So here it will then activate the helper T lymphocytes right and as, as soon as this helper T lymphocyte will come across this MHC2 bound fragment of spike protein it will also become active and it will start secreting lots of chemical messengers or cytokines. These cytokines will then activate and they will cause growth and proliferation that is called clonal proliferation of specific cytotoxic T cells as well as B lymphocytes. So lots of copies of cytotoxic T cell, the specific cytotoxic T cell as well as specific B lymphocytes will be formed as well as it will, it will also cause the clonal proliferation of itself. So lots of copies of specific helper T lymphocytes will be formed. As this specific cytotoxic T cell becomes active, it will destroy this vaccine infected cell so as to say, right? And then you might be worried here, okay, some of our cells will be destroyed. No, that is not something to worry about. We have trillions of cells in our body. Daily, some of these cells are lost and they are then replaced by new cells. So that is not something to, to worry about. Furthermore, some of these B lymphocytes, they will start secreting the antibodies against the spike protein. So anti-spike protein antibody will be formed and some of these cells of, from these clones, they will form memory cells, memory cytotoxic T cells, memory B cells, as well as memory helper T lymphocytes. And of course, we will have these S protein specific antibodies. Now let's say if an immunized person is exposed to coronavirus, what will happen that the specific S protein antibodies, they will bind with this spike protein and they will number one, they will prevent the entry of virus into the cell. Secondly, what they will do is that they will cause the destruction of this coronavirus. And even if somehow this SARS-CoV-2 virus, it enters into the cell and starts secreting its and start creating its own protein, that is not a problem as well. We have the specific cytotoxic T cells as well that will immediately destroy this cell as soon as it start creating the protein. So very few cells will be lost and there will not be the formation of disease. So that's how this vaccines work. Thank you so much for watching this video.